to know. Talk 1470 WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the People's Advocate Hour with South Florida Attorney Joseph Bryant. Listen for the next hour as Attorney Joseph Bryant informs you on different legal topics. Whether you are considering bankruptcy or dealing with mortgage or debt issues, Joe can help you. Knowledge is power. Don't fear the unknown. Get answers to your burning legal questions now. So call in and ask Attorney Joseph Bryant to answer your questions. 888-565-1470. And now, here's Attorney Joseph Bryant. Hi there, how are you doing today? This is uh, Attorney Joseph Bryan, the People's Advocate, and this is the People's Advocate Hour. Listen, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call in at 888-565-1470. Call in with those burning questions, the ones that you really wanted to ask but never had a chance to. If you have an attorney to yell at, well, you can call me and try. We might turn you off, we might turn you on. Call in and let's know what you're thinking today. If you like, you can watch us uh, streaming live on W. NNRadio.com. We're here. Come on, listen in. Ask us your questions. Well, this is the People's Advocate Hour. And what does that mean? We're here to talk about you. And we're talking about your issues. And that's what happens when you come in to see me at my office over there on Hollywood uh, Boulevard, 95. Uh, we're easily located. We're in the downtown Hollywood area in a very nice little building with a parking garage right behind it so that you don't have to get wet in these rainy summer. By the way, the Almanac's expecting this to be a very rainy summer, so enjoy your commute with me on the phone because it's going to rain a lot this summer. Looking for the right side, though, we're not expecting to have too many hurricanes hitting Florida. However, a couple Sandys are expected, according to the Almanac, to hit New York again. So if you're planning a vacation to New York this summer, keep an eye on the hurricanes. Anyways, has anybody been paying attention to the football games going on out there? Oh, you guys don't know about football. It's called soccer here in America. In the rest of the world, we call it football because you're kicking the ball with a foot versus throwing it with your hand. And sometimes you do actually have two hands on it and you are throwing it if you're the goalie. Otherwise, no hands in football. So anybody's watching the games, I'm sure you're excited to know that the Americans are still out there playing. They've not been kicked out of a game yet. And, uh, you know, they went and they played a game in the middle of nowhere. For anybody that's never been to Brazil, Manaus is in the middle of nowhere. It's at the opening of uh, the Amazon River. And there's pretty much nothing going on except for trade related to the Amazon. And it's pretty much the last city you'll see as you head up the Amazon. After that, it'll become smaller and smaller towns until you get to places that are basically when the rainy season's not going on and the river goes down, uh, they are like an island surrounded by mud. Anyways, I'm sure you're really happy to know all this stuff. I'm watching these football games because I find it to be entertaining. Hopefully sooner or later, uh, there'll be a really exciting game. Uh, some people get excited about the simple kick. I'm looking for something really wild and crazy, like, you know, a, a head com coming off or something interesting like that. Anyways, so listen, I just want to say something here. As uh, an attorney, I find that those that are rubberneckers should really stop doing it. You know, focus on the traffic, drive forward. Uh, just because there's an accident to the left or to the right doesn't mean that you should slow up traffic and put your foot on the brake and stop like it's a stoplight in the middle of I-95. I personally find that that is not a good thing. Anyways, let's go transition from things that I care about to things that you care about. So I got a bunch of questions in the other day, and someone was asking um, if they were to buy a property um, at an auction, would they still have to pay the difference between the auction price and the mortgage balance? And I thought that was an interesting question because it seems to be impossible to be asked. Uh, the truth is, is no, you do not owe any balance. Whatever you pay at the auction, that is the purchase price. And it wipes out the first mortgage or the second mortgage, depending on what's going on. The problem with buying at an auction is, is that you don't get a clear understanding of whether or not there are other people out there with interest in the property that have not been wiped out. For example, if a homeowners association is foreclosing on a, uh, on a townhome and you're buying at that auction, you may be buying subject to a first mortgage. You may be buying subject to a second mortgage. You may be buying subject to several different things that have not been wiped out in that foreclosure. Uh, 
and as a consequence you spend a lot of money buying something with a lot of debt on it that you'll ultimately lose your money so it's always good to go sit down with an attorney like myself and get some good advice before you jump the gun if you're thinking about buying in the marketplace of today and you don't have the experience you might want to con contact one of the real estate investment associations like uh, Bria or Dria there's many of them out there they're real estate investment associations often the memberships are very inexpensive but you get a chance to join with other people who are trying to invest in the real estate marketplace and you can jump on the education and the experience in some cases of 50 60 years of experience and not make the same mistakes that an office would make because you'll have people around protecting you and advising you and keeping you on the wrong uh, right place now the other thing is 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 that uh, we also got some other good questions here today um, the, they were uh, at one point in time uh, this couple was going for a divorce and they, she's concerned because uh, they want to do a short sale on a property and uh, she's concerned about how it's going to affect her well I, if the property's upside down it's getting rid of a debt so I think it's beneficial to the separation of a relationship to uh, go ahead and short sell a property and therefore re remove one more asset from the uh, well asset and liability from the pages of your uh, marriage settlement agreement and once again making it easier for you to do the separation not to mention the benefits of the short sale are that they change it from a foreclosure and they consider it a uh, payment for less than owed although that's a negative remark on your credit profile it is something that will uh, fall away very quickly and have a much lower negative impact on your credit worthiness and so I'm, I'm a great lover of short sales because I believe that it's one of the ways to get out from underneath an upside down property an undesirable property and especially if you're going through the process of a divorce uh, once again you don't really want to have a property in that situation continuing because one property is going to most likely get uh, transferred to the other person through a quick claim deed and the other person is not going to have the ownership of the property and have little or no effect upon trying to re uh, reduce the ability uh, to uh, harm their credit worthiness. Uh, I've had a client who came to me and uh, as part of a marriage settlement agreement um, her husband was to receive ownership of the homesteaded property which was substantially upside down and he was supposed to pay the mortgage and hold her harmless and you know hold her from any costs or any liabilities arising out of the mortgage. Well he's not exactly the most nice ex-husband to be and so he didn't pay the uh, mortgage let it go into foreclosure um, spent two three years collecting rents not sharing any with her of course because she's quick claimed her interest in that property not paying the mortgage pocketing the money uh, harming her credit worthiness to two three hundred point drop uh, insulting her when she would call him to discuss it of course and telling her to mind her own business uh, of course uh, in the marriage settlement agreement he's liable to her but that means he, she has to now go back to court and argue that first of all he breached the marriage settlement agreement and that uh, he now has to pay for her attorney's fees that she's incurred and of course there's been a slander on her credit worthiness so she's uh, had an increase in the expense of uh, getting a, a car loan so there's all sorts of different damages that she can go after him but uh, you know if this matter had been taken into consideration by the divorce attorney um, possibly she would have been able to mitigate her damages without having to take him to court because often once a divorce goes through uh, the situation between the exes sometimes is very acrimonious acrimonious it's a very nice way of saying ain't nice to each other no more so the reality is is that uh, you got to take these things into consideration when you're transferring properties anyways all right so anyways uh, this is Joseph Bryan uh, the people's advocate if you have any questions feel free to send them in tweet or us uh, we are available to answer your questions you can call us in at 888-565-1470 or you can watch us live on the internet at, at wnnradio.com we're live feeding you get a chance to see who I look like don't get frightened and uh, let's talk about some other questions that have come in here today 
Uh, let me see what we got going on. There was something interesting here today. Oh, yes. Uh, somebody was asking me that uh, they're in the position of being uh, removed from their home because of a uh, foreclosure that is going on. The question is, is uh, how much time do I generally have after the auction has gone on? And the reality is, is, is that, uh, say today there was an auction, now 10 days, not including Saturdays and Sundays, in this particular case, if we were saying 10 days, that would be next Sunday, uh, the clerk of the court will issue a certificate of sale. In this particular case being Sunday, it'll be the following Monday, so it'll be 11 days into the future, they'll issue a certificate of sale. At that point in time, the new owner owns the property. They can seek a writ of possession right then and there if they know that you're in the property, but generally speaking, they're going to come by the property and knock on the door, and if it appears that it's abandoned, they will most likely break the lock to enter the property. So if you're still in the property at that 11th day, you really should have notes on the door and letting everybody know that, that the property has not been abandoned. Please call me at this number. Otherwise, there's a good chance that they may enter the premises to see if anything's going on. And if it appears that the property inside is abandoned and that there's nobody living there, um, and it looks like what's left in the house is garbage, they'll probably clean it up and take possession. So one needs to be very careful if they're going to push it to the limit. Uh, one should probably contact a lawyer before the sale date to see what additional issues uh, may be there. And once again, if you wanted to come in to see us, uh, we're located in downtown Hollywood, uh, just off of Hollywood Boulevard to 995. Um, our phone number for if you want to make an appointment is 954-320-6940. We are the People's Advocate, and we're here to answer your questions. Now, for those that have been listening in, and have been watching our show, uh, you'll notice that I'm short one person today. My tit-for-tat conversation partner, uh, Lauren, is busy at work uh, finishing things off so she can get ready to jump on a plane and fly to Argentina. She's going to take a little 10-day vacation and run around Buenos Aires. Uh, little does she know, it's cold down there. It's between 40 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. So anyways, listen, we're going to take a break in a few more moments, and uh, when we do, we'll come on back and we'll answer some more questions and see what you'd like to do. Let us know. Uh, call us in at 888-565-1470. Ask us your questions. If not, you can listen to us live on the internet at WNNRadio.com. Once again, this is the People's Advocate Hour, and this is Attorney Joe Bryan. Hopefully we can answer some of your questions. Give us a call in today. Once again. Are we in the same boat? Very good. Are you losing sleep at night due to your debt situation? Call attorney Joseph Bryan today to sit down for a free consultation to discuss your rights. The People's Advocate is the trade name of the Bryan Law Group. The People's Advocate provides services to individuals and small businesses in bankruptcy, foreclosure, short sales, loan modifications, debt relief, consumer law, and estate planning in the South Florida area. Your initial consultation is free of charge. Proudly serving the South Florida community for over 21 years, Attorney Joseph Bryant will listen to your concerns and discuss options available to you. For more information, please call The People's Advocate at 888-828-9008. That's 888-828-9008. You are listening to The People's Advocate Hour with South Florida Attorney Joseph Bryant. He keeps you informed about your rights when it comes to bankruptcy or foreclosure and wants you to be part of his show. Call 888-565-1470 and help him help you get informed. Now, back to our show. Wow, thank you so much for hanging around and I hope you're having a safe travels out there. A little lightning happened up here in the North Broward area. I hope you're enjoying the show while you're driving, but pay attention to the road. No rubbernecking, please. Keep going, keep going. Let everybody else go home faster. Do the speed limit, unlike me. Anyways, all right, listen, I, I got a, quite a few good questions here today, so we're going to go through some questions. 
And uh, somebody here was saying that they had filed uh, for Chapter 7 and were discharged. And it included their first and second mortgage, Henna HELOC. Can you picture that? First, second, and HELOC? These people bored hard against this property. And they wanted to know, does that mean that they own the property free and clear of the mortgages? You wish. No, of course not. What it means is, is that you're free and clear of the promise to pay those debts. The HELOC, the second mortgage promissory note, and the first mortgage promissory note. You no longer have an obligation to pay. You're now released. However, the mortgage is acting like a security agreement for that promise to pay, and it's attached to the property. So unless there was an objection to these um, um, promissory notes and mortgages and they were stricken in bankruptcy, they still st stand there and they still are attached to the property. Now, nothing stops you at this point in time in case you're interested in going through with the process of a short sale. Once the discharge is included, you can always go ahead at this point in time and seek out a buyer for your property and go through the short sale process. Uh, some of the benefits is, is that, you uh, generally speaking, the banks want a short sale versus going through the foreclosure process all the way to the sale date because they can kind of control the purchase price. And secondly, uh, during that process, you get to remain in the property unless you're having one of those uh, trustees down here that are saying that uh, if you're not going to reaffirm the debt and keep the property, uh, you need to get out. Some of the trustees out there are requiring that if you are going to uh, vacate the premises and surrender the property and they often require you to move out within 30 days of the 341 hearing. What's the 341 hearing? That's the first time you have an opportunity to deal with your bankruptcy before the trustee. It's usually uh, four to five weeks after you file, sometimes three weeks, but generally four to five weeks uh, after you file, you'll have a hearing before the trustee. They'll re review your filing. They'll ask you questions. And it's really important for you to be honest and truthful to your attorney because he can't protect you from yourself if you don't tell him before you file. Oh, gosh. I was sitting with one of my clients, and we were watching this poor guy in front of us. Uh, he wasn't so um, forthcoming during the questions of the trustee made me to believe that he probably wasn't so forthcoming during his interview with the, the attorney and probably told the attorney what he wanted him to hear versus what he needed to hear and as a consequence I watched this guy lose a lot of assets to the trustee I mean he had about a three hundred thousand dollar home that was owned free and clear but because he'd been out of state uh, for several months and um, the attorney hadn't understood to the extent that the guy had been out of the area and more importantly uh, the trustee was very interested uh, in going after the homestead claiming that he had um, voided the homestead exemption by virtue of staying out of the uh, out of the state some 24 months I don't know what ended up happening in that case but once again it's always helpful when you're sitting down with your bankruptcy attorney attorney to tell him everything he needs to know tell him everything everything things that you don't want him to know about that house that you own in Barbados he needs to know about it because quite candidly they do check they do have a great system that some use Accurant, some use other different organizations and uh, one thing leads to another and they find things uh, I was co-counsel in another case and they found a bakery in Colombia that was owned by a family and they had placed it in the uh, the uh, the debtor's name as a way to protect them from the possibilities of corruption and you know, I guess kidnapping and extortion that exists sometimes in in Colombia and they figured that if it was owned by a family outside the country they would be less likely to be exposed to such things however the person who didn't really feel that they owned it it was just in namesake alone didn't understand that's not how the trustee looked at it so they saw a hundred and eighty thousand dollar asset